Naturally, we'd assume we can do the same types of customizations with numbered lists that we can with bulleted lists, and we would not be wrong. Don't forget, we're not limited though with numbered lists to just numbers. We can choose between Arabic and Roman numerals, as well as upper and lowercase letters. Let's take a look at doing this in conjunction with defining our own custom multi-level list. So we're going to kind of do a two for one here. We won't go through all nine levels, but we are going to go through one or two to show you how we can find the settings and how we can create multi-level lists. Now the question first becomes, why would we be doing this? Well, let's take a look just a little bit lower down on page three at our short term goals. What we've decided is that we want to break this list up a little bit and kind of show some major focus areas and then the goals within those areas. So we're going to start by adding just a couple extra lines of text. So let's go ahead and click with our mouse and move our cursor to the very beginning of the list, which happens to be in front of the line that starts increase branding and name recognition. We're going to add a line above this. So we'll press enter, use our up arrow, and we'll type what our heading should be, which is simply going to be sales and marketing. The next entry is going to be for administration and facilities. So let's use our down arrow to move down to the line that says provide room rentals. Press the home key to move our cursor to the front of that line. Press enter to get a new blank line and then the up arrow and then we can go ahead and add our label. So what we ultimately want to do with this is we want to create two different levels within this bulleted list. And now we have the headings in place to do so. The next thing we would want to do is to go ahead and select the list. So let's go ahead and select from sales and marketing all the way down to fully catalog all assets. This is the list that we want to modify. Currently, this is a bulleted list and we could certainly go in and we could turn off the bulleted list option. But let's just go right over to the multi-level list use the drop down and just like we saw with our bullets we have the option all the way at the bottom to come down and choose define new multi-level list. This box of course is a little bit more interesting than just customizing bullet points. We can see on the top left that we can choose from any one of the nine possible levels in Word. We of course are going to start with level one. On the right hand side we get to see a preview so you can kind of get an idea if what you're doing looks the way you want it to look. Notice that we do have number format, but right now, because it was currently set as a bulleted list, we don't actually see a number, we see a little bullet point. In order to change this, you need to move down one more row and look at the number style for this level. Instead of using a bullet from the drop down, we can choose to use the spelled out words like first, second, third, two digit, three digit, four digit, you get the idea here. There are all different kinds of formats, and if you scroll up, you will also see your Arabic and Roman numerals, your upper and lowercase letters. Well, we actually want to go ahead and make this a regular Arabic numeral one, two, three. So we'll give that a click. Now under enter formatting, we can see that we can select the number one. It actually looks like a little feel. It has some shading behind it. We could do just that, but I want to show you how to do something a little bit more creative because this is going to be a goals list. It's going to be very specific we want to add some text to the front of the first level. In other words, we want to identify that it is a focus area and then we simply want to number our goals after that. So I'm going to press the home key, get that cursor at the very beginning and show you that we can actually type text to be part of our lettering or numbering designations. In this case, we're going to say focus area. We want to make sure we have proper punctuation. So focus area, then press the space bar. So it says focus area one. And then I think we'd probably like to have a colon. If you look at the preview, you can see how this is going to look. We actually can have static text in addition to the numbers, letters, or bullets that will change as we progress through the list. That's pretty cool. Now we could also click on font and we get the regular font dialog. I'm not going to show you that though because you know how to use that. But changing the font, the size, italics, and those types of things are available from here. So far so good. Now we need to go to level two. Notice that it pops down and we're looking at what used to be kind of an empty circle as a bullet point. Once again, we simply need to configure this the way we want it to be. Now we already said focus area one, so we certainly could continue with a bullet point. 
but let's just try something different. Let's go ahead and try some uppercase letters. We can select those from the list. We don't have to do anything with it, but I kind of like to have separators, colons or periods, hyphens, something that sets them apart. So we're going to do an uppercase letter followed by a period. We need to type the period and then a space. The next thing I wanted to discuss is kind of the bottom part of this window. Often we don't have to mess with it too much, but you can customize how things are indented and aligned. For example, position can be left, centered, or right. If you click on any one of these, the preview will help you understand what that's going to be doing for you. We'll leave it at left aligned. Now comes the confusing part, aligned at and text indent at, which are two different things. I'm going to go ahead and bump up aligned at, which is currently 0.75, and I want you to watch you as I increase this number. This actually shows us where the bullet point or the letter or number is going to appear. So you can see if we wanted this to be aligned more under the number one after focus area, because focus area was so long, we could actually increase that, probably to about 2.05 inches. The second setting, text indent at, we'll go ahead and play with that one so you can watch the preview as well, is allowing us to keep things as flush left paragraphs. In other words, if we don't want the letter A to be indented and then any subsequent lines that may follow that to come all the way back to the left, we can increase this as well. The number here also happens to be 2.05, so we have created it so both the letter and any subsequent lines will be aligned with each other. If we wanted it to be kind of a hanging indent, we could continue to increase, and it looks like we'd probably have to set that to 2.5. So that is something that is a little bit more advanced, but it adds a lot of elegance as well. That's all you have to do to create your numbered multi-level list. In this case, we only did two levels. Normally, you would want to go ahead and do as many levels or as appropriate. Since most people don't go all the way to nine, don't waste your time doing it, but usually one and two, sometimes even three, or four may be what you want to see. At this point, we simply click OK. Now we can see one of our problems is everything that we had in our list was at one level. No worries, because we know that we can simply click at the beginning of a line of text and press our tab key to demote or indent. Here's where we can see our alignment. And we'll just do this a couple different times. for each of those lines. If you accidentally indent something and didn't want to, Shift Tab is your friend and it will bring it back out. Now what we can see is that this may be a little bit dramatic. Sometimes what appears in the preview is not exactly how it's going to appear on your document because the preview after all is very generic and just supposed to be that, a preview. So you might want to go in and make modifications. We can modify a list, just like we've done with so many other things in Word, by simply right-clicking on it from a gallery. We won't take the time to do that because I think you get how to do it. It's just a matter of now going in and making it look exactly the way that you want. If we click on the drop-down for our multi-level lists up at the top in our ribbon, we can see at the very bottom of the gallery it has lists in the current document, and here's our focus areas that we just created. Remember, right-click is our friend. And if we right click, we can choose to save this in the list library. In other words, that way it won't only show up under lists and current documents, it'll show up at the top and be there permanently. That way we can make sure that we all find it. So if we ever go back to our drop down, now we can see that this is the current list. It is important to realize though that saving it in the library is not the same as creating or saving the list as a list style. They are two different things. Right now we've created a list, but not necessarily a style. In order to formally create a list style, we would need to choose that from our dropdown. Now we've been looking at the top, we've been moving things around. When we first created our list, we chose define new multi-level list. But the very last option is define new list style. Again, we won't go through all of the different settings here because I think you get how this works but a list style is a little bit more inclusive. Notice that when we created the multi-level list, all we could really do was work primarily with how are the different designators configured. Is it a bullet point? Is it a number? Is it a letter? And so forth. We could have clicked on font and changed some of that, but this style box is actually like the styles that we've created before. And we can see that here, we can do things like giving it a name. 
The difference when we work with a list style is that we work with the different levels by saying apply formatting to and then we make the selections that we want either from the quick bar or by going down to the button on the bottom left that says format and here is where we can work with things like the font. Notice that there are certain things that are not available. Because this is going to be a list style, it's not going to give us the option to work with things like tabs. Those are handled by some of the settings that we already looked at. We're not actually going to go through the steps here because again, it really is just what we did before, but simply accessed by using a different feature. And this would create the style instead of just a list. Just like hard formatting or manual formatting versus creating a text or a paragraph style, the same difference is here. Once we have it as a style, it's much easier to reuse and to update across documents as well as across templates. What's important to realize here, though, is that lists, both bulleted and numbered, are used commonly in not only Word documents, but also emails, presentations, and other types of publications. They simplify, summarize, draw attention to, and visually enhance our messages. We've learned that applying built-in and custom lists to our Word documents is actually a fairly simple matter. It's simply a matter, though, of deciding what we want, how we want it to look, and then designing and applying it to the text. While not everything should be formatted this way, for a lot of content, List provides a way to make it easier for our audience to read, therefore making our document more effective, and regardless of the exact content, that's always our goal. We want it to be easy to read, to be engaging, to be interesting, and to be a 